Welcome to Nadal and Tobago Town News 4 Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. <music> Ministry of Food Production trains citizens in growing hydroponic crops. Government receives funds from the European Union to support the country's exit from the sugar sector. And the Ministry of Tobago Development issues checks to 16 NGOs. Thank you for joining us. Holders of the TT card now have the option of growing their own food. This, as the Ministry of the People has teamed up with the Ministry of Food Production for the training of citizens in growing hydroponic crops. The aim is to ensure citizens become self-reliant and empowered through entrepreneurial skills. Maximizing the use of our lands for the promotion of self-sufficiency of citizens through food sustainability. This is the aim of the Backyard Hydroponics Project launched by the Ministry of Food Production. Under the program Agriculture Now Training, persons are given the opportunity to learn farming techniques utilizing hydroponics facilities within their own home spaces. The program is as a result of the collaboration between the Food Production Ministry and the Ministry of the People and Social Development. Food Production Minister Devant Maharaj says the program is available to citizens who have access to the TT card, while the project seeks to move citizens from a place of economic dependence into independence. We intend to roll out this initiative in all areas of Trinidad and Tobago through um, training in at least two constituencies per month. The next program targeted to be rolled out uh, in the constituencies of Siparia and Karani Central, and every other month we'll have two other areas we'll be getting into. To be eligible to participate in this program, participants must be holders of the food card and in need of assistance must be able to accommodate 15 pot, pots in their yard. And again, pots in, like that, no other kind of pot. Interested in the program, committed uh, to the program. So far, 19 persons have received training, while participants will receive equipment and the necessary tools to practice this type of agriculture. Under this program, the Agriculture Now Training Unit, in collaboration with the URP Agriculture Unit, provides the funds for the training materials and the kits for the clients. Each kit is comprised of concrete pots, sharp sand, barrel water cans, fertilizers, spray, uh, spray bottles, seedlings, and information leaflets, as well as technical support. On the first two days, participants will be trained in the basics of crop production and container planting with hydroponics, practical planting of crops using sharp sand and hydroponics in concrete pots. One participant expressed her gratitude to the course and how she sees it enabling her community in becoming farmers in the near future. Now with this course, we did our backyard right here under our nose and we could have, they could have explained to us why this leaf looking like that why that not in the proper form and all this thing and they told us what chemicals we could use from what we must not use and we were proud of it and on top of it we went one step ahead of the of the course we got this move is being described as providing safe organic friendly crops for citizens according to director of the agriculture now unit dr bibi ali training provided offers healthier choices for citizens. This is a skill set that we would have imparted to the 19 trainees here this morning, giving them the power of a lifelong skill so they get to produce their own healthy, safe and nutritious food, giving them the opportunity to go further in their education and to get employment if they wish to. But as I just said, most importantly, to be able to to produce for themselves and their family food that is nutrient filled. Over 135 persons have been trained within a 12 week duration. It's expected that the program will move to the various constituencies across the nation in the ministry's drive to fulfilling government's first pillar, empowering citizens. Kimberly Kalawan, News 4. Trinidad and Tobago has been given more than $120 million by the European Union as part of its support to this country following the island's exit from the sugar sector. Minister of Planning and Sustainable Development, Dr. The Honorable Mohendra Tiwari and Minister of Food Production, The Honorable Devant Maharaj, both were present to collect the funding on behalf of the government of the people of Trinidad and Tobago.
The European Union has delivered on the first tranche of payments owed to Trinidad and Tobago following its withdrawal from the sugar sector. The disbursement ceremony saw 15.124 million euros being handed over to the government as part of the national adaptation strategy for the sugar sector. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development, Arlene McComey, says the payments represent support received for dealing with challenges, creating opportunities and reviving the food sector after this country's exit from the sugar industry. It is just one of three payments the country can expect to receive. It will be the first of three trances which will amount to a total of just over 31 million euros. The remaining two tranches are payable upon achievement of indicators which include implementation of green buffer zones, water reservoirs on targeted Karani lands, and bringing some 2,000 acres of Karani lands under agricultural production. These targets are intended to achieve targets which aim to revitalize agriculture and create opportunities in new fields of endeavor. Planning Minister Dr. Botawari says the money will go a long way in ensuring the sustainability of diverse agriculture production and reducing food inflation. Although agriculture has been pretty flat in the economy for a long time, we have had three consecutive quarters of growth in the agricultural sector in Trinidad and Tobago within the last three quarters. The second point I want to make is that the inflation rate in Trinidad and Tobago based on the last month's assessment is 5.6% and that the inflation in the food sector is in single digits so that we are making some progress on those two fronts. Minister Tawari says the project will be of great benefit to those affected by the closure of the sugar industry. It really takes into account land that has been left idle since the closure of the sugar industry and trying really to use that land base for diversification of the agricultural sector through production and more than that bringing economic opportunity for those people who have lost the old opportunity from uh, the sugar industry so from our point of view in addition to what has been done before this is a tremendous opportunity for rehabilitation of conditions that impact both on people and that are impacting on the land that has been displaced by the closure of the sugar industry. Gregory McBurney, News 4. When we come back, check distribution from the Ministry of Tobago Development. Stay with us. There will now be greater efficiency in the way public tenders are advertised and accessed by contractors. This comes as the government continues to incorporate information communication technologies in its improvement and transformation of public service delivery. An increased interest and number of bids by local and international contractors are expected to be the result of the latest initiative to advertise government contracts online. The Central Tenders Board and iGovTT recently signed an MOU to launch tenders notices online, which will save thousands of dollars in advertising by posting tender notices to the government's TT Connect online e-portal. The service will guarantee an accurate and up-to-date listing of government notices. This online service is intended to be a comprehensive, centralized, and searchable repository that is accessible all day every day to potential bidders and anyone who chooses to keep track of government tender activity. And as the director indicated, they'd like to see the, the, um, the tender awards also um, published on this, um, in this way. This, the service is a simple yet very effective one that brings an answer to several problems faced by both government organizations and business persons in government procurement practices. For example, if a ministry or agency wants to give business persons a fair opportunity to bid for government business, they must openly advertise all such business opportunities. 
Furthermore, to amass a qualified bidder's pool for a particular tender, ministries must sufficiently advertise tenders to increase the chances of it being seen by qualified respondents. However, in its efforts to ensure fairness and transparency, ministries also have to realistically consider and effectively manage the actual dollar cost of advertising, of advertising these services on the local media and so on. For instance, publicizing a, sen a single tender notice repeatedly in the print media can easily cost a ministry thousands of dollars. In its challenges, it is challenges like these that present the greatest opportunities for demonstrating the value of applied technology. The Tender Notices online initiative is free, provides uninterrupted advertising, allows for larger bidders pool, presents quick updates and uniquely provides a backup record of tenders at any time. Chairman of the Central Tenders Board, Indrani Rampasad, welcomed the collaborative effort and benefits that are to be derived. It is very important to have this service so that stakeholders can access tender notices published by the Central Tenders Board with ease. It is a service that is very user-friendly and due to the wide audience, we expect more bidders. Now, this would have a ripple effect and would increase competition and would also have the, we, what we call the upgrading of quality of pro productivity as well as having more economic e efficiency. She used the opportunity to request that the award of contracts be posted on TT Connect as well, as she says it is in line with international best practices in procurement legislation. TT Connect tender notices online imposes no subscription fees for usage of the service, and the Ministry of Science and Technology views this initiative as important in its drive for sustaining growth and securing the nation's prosperity through ICTs. Nikolai Edwards. News 4. The Ministry of Tobago Development issued checks totaling 66,700 to 60 non-government organizations to assist in allowing them to execute their mandates and community projects. Director of the Human Capacity Unit within the Ministry of Tobago Development, Cecil Dyrimple, said the NGO check distribution has been part of a series of distributions done by the Ministry of Tobago Development as they would have embarked on similar distributions earlier in the year. He pledged continued commitment from the Ministry of Tobago Development to the community organizations. The Ministry of Tobago Development, through its Human Capital Unit, its NGO Support Section, and its Financial Aid Section, aims to support, engage, and encourage and encourage the sustainable development of all Tobago organizations and all Tobago people. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tobago Development, Mrs. Bernadette Solomon Karoma, encouraged the recipients to appreciate what she described as a piece of the pie. As we all know, even in a family, when you have a cake or a bread to show up, you have to slice it up in such a way that everybody gets a piece of the pie. So I know that some of you here this afternoon you know, may not like the piece or the slice that you got and find it is a bit too small. But I want you all to look at it in the context that it is based on what is available in the ministry and based on the number of requests coming in. The man behind the Tobago Dark Warriors Kickboxing Federation, Jason Fraser, who also received a check, said he is indeed grateful for the assistance, and although he isn't sure of the amount just yet, he says they will put the money to great use since the Federation has much to accomplish this year, including a trip that totals $337,000. This check that we received today will go towards six Tobagonians who has just been selected on a national team to go to Russia and St. Petersburg to participate in the World Championship of Sambo in November. Another recipient, Music Amateurs, said their aim is to continue providing a forum for persons interested in classical and religious music as they see both genres lack the recognition in Tobago. Um, whatever part of the pie, we will definitely use it because 
there are so many things to be done that it will be no difficulty at all to make certain that we use it wisely and that we are coming for it. The Minister of Tobago Development, Dr. Delman Baker, was not present at this specific distribution, but was, however, represented by his advisor, George Stanley Bier, who further expressed courtesies on behalf of the Ministry of Tobago Development. We are extremely proud that we have been able to provide some measure of financial relief to you, those of you who received the um, checks today. And we'll continue to partner with you towards serving the NGO community as well as other communities on our island of Tobago. Other recipients included the All Tobago Fisher Folk Association, Tobago Dark Warriors Kickboxing Federation, Drummers of Tobago, and the Buccaneers Steel Orchestra. Reporting from Tobago, Natoya Johnson, News 4. When we come back, top of the table clash between Club Sando and Guay United. Stay with us. On match day 12, the last unbeaten team in the Blink B-Mobile National Super League lost that record in a top-of-the-table clash. Guaya United rebounded from a loss on match day 11 to beat rivals club Sando on the weekend. Wayne Cunningham has the details from Guaya Guayari. Malabar FC handed Guaya United their first loss of the season last week Sunday, leaving club Sando as the only unbeaten team at the start of match day 12 in the National Super League. Sando were hoping to keep that record when they travelled to Guayaguayari on Sunday for the biggest clash in the league to date. And the fans in Guaya came out for the event. The home team went about its task early, Ryan Stewart putting on the pressure. <laughs> Kendes Garcia also looking for the Guaya opener. The pressure paid off in the 23rd minute. The shot from Calvin Lopez, beating the keeper with a deflection. <laughs> One nil Guaya is how the first half ended. They were aiming to make it two with this free kick, but Andre Marshall does well to deny Jody Alsop. Instead, it will be Club Sando tying things up. Devon Morris silencing the massive Eastern Counties crowd in the 62nd minute. Things went south for Sando after that though. First, Devon Dredd next fell from the match by referee Neil Brazan for this tackle on Desta Francis. <laughs> then to add insult to injury, there was a canine pitch invasion. When the football resumed, why erupted as the prolific Carlin Hughes retakes the lead for his team. 2-1 the score in the 75th minute. Sando's woes continued when they lost their experience Kern Cupid to another red card. <laughs> Guay United sealed the win in the 90th. Also stabbing home the Francis Center to make it 3-1. Despite the loss, Club Sando still sit atop the standings, but Guaya has two games in hand. Third place Malabar was idle on match day 12, but they are also looking good on 21 points. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. 
News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. As the oldest sports club in the East at 71, the Squadron Sport Club can boast of many great sportsmen. An exhibition match was played under the new lights as the Henry Street Recreation Grounds in Trincity finally received the promised lights as part of TNTech's public lighting program. The initiative is part of the drive to encourage sporting activities, character development and healthy friendships in the community funded by the Ministry of Public Utilities. Addressing the gathering, Mrs. Sushila Ramkisud Mag, chairman of TNTEC, says the ceremony is also about community benefit and promoting a healthy and cohesive society. We appreciate that it takes well-balanced individuals and families to build stable and strong communities. And based on past feedback, we expect that these lights will enrich your community spirit. The history of the Squadron Recreation Club, which has made its home here since 1942, tells a story of love of community and friendship among the Kingston, Hamilton, and Fraser's families that were, kept, that were key players in carving out this space. Also present was the chairman of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation, Khadija Amin, who says, this is one of the several grounds that have recently been outfitted with lighting equipment. This turning on of the lights here at Squadron is one of several that has been done over the time that I have been at Tunapuna Corporation and I must commend TNTEC and the ministry's program for ensuring that our communities have the opportunity to get closer and to progress in their own way. She noted the government is also working on upgrading grounds and coaching programs in order to enhance wider participation as opposed to only a few individuals only taking a sweat. MP for Aruka Maloney, Alicia Hospitalis, gave a brief history of the Squadron Sports Club. It was in 1942. Approximately 71 years ago, in January of 1942, 12 youths between the ages of 14 to 16 years of age took the giant step to form their own cricket team. And one day, while at play on the open field, they arrived at the name Squadron because a squadron of aeroplanes was flying above. At that time was World War II. You could imagine, men, these young men living in that time, some of them still alive today. They were living in World War II. And, this, and they saw the squadron of plane that was on a mission. The 12 young men then believed that they could soar to great heights in cricket and be a force to be reckoned with in any sporting discipline. Some of the pioneers of the club include the Hamilton brothers, the Kingston brothers, the Flemings and others. Persons utilizing the grounds are no longer forced to play in the dark. It has also become significantly easier to locate the sports club as it was previously shrouded by darkness. The feature address was given by the Honorable Nizam Batch, Minister of Public Utilities, after which the lighting of the ground was commissioned. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.